Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. And another heavyweight news and notes mashup video today, starting with Dillian White, who says he's in the second phase of his career, and he is going to take the fights that make sense for him, for all sorts of reasons, money being one, uh, one among them. So White did a number of interviews at the Liam Smith fight and of a potential fight with Anthony Joshua. He said, look, I'll take that tomorrow. I'm ready for December. If he wants to get into that rematch, we can do it. Although it was noted by one of the interviewers that Eddie Hearn wasn't particularly keen for that fight in December, instead saying that potentially it could be for next year. But Dillian White said, look, I want it. I don't know why we can't make it next. So we'll have to see what happens there. But he was asked about Daniel Dubois because he's been a little bit coy about whether he's been in the mix for a Dubois fight. And he said that that is a possibility. But he did say in the next week or so, there would be some more clarity with the, the what next for him and what he was going to be doing in terms of an immediate next fight. Whether that involves Dubois or Anthony Joshua or someone else, a little unclear. But he did also say that he believes he's got a lot left to give. He's got um, enough in the tank where he can be a competitive world-class heavyweight. And he did also say of the Tyson Fury fight that he believed he should have been given some time after the bell had rung to recover and then the doctor assess him if he was able to continue. He says that the British Board of Control, Boxing Board of Control, does have a bit to answer for and he doesn't think that the ending was fair. Although he didn't reference the push, which, you know, obviously previously he had said Tyson Fury knocked him out via a push which would make him a literal pushover he seems to be distancing himself from that so make up the situation what you will meanwhile Tyson Fury says if Alexander Usyk doesn't want to fight him this year he will look to face another opponent saying Alexander Usyk stated he doesn't want to fight anymore he wants to fight next year not this year so I'm not going to wait around for anybody I'm going to be announcing a fight next week whether that actually comes to fruition is another story because we're on the sort of precipice of undisputed and it's not like Usyk is talking about you know delaying it by a year or anything like that a few months from what he's been saying to Ukrainian media so Fury wants to get back in the ring and I guess understandably he wants to be active so potentially there could be an interim fight but I guess you also have to weigh up and the promoters will be doing this as well is the risk and reward worth it with the undisputed fight being right there because Fury could get a cut an injury um you know something of that nature and then all of a sudden it could scupper an undisputed fight and let's face it he's probably not going to be taking a super tough fight if he's looking to have some sort of stay busy or interim fight the name Mahmoud Cha has been uh, out and about this week uh, again begging Fury for a fight and Fury hasn't closed it down but also I think the promoters and broadcasters they don't want to pay Fury 10 20 million dollars to effectively face a non-factor in char or someone of that ilk I mean no one needs to see more Tom Schwartz type fights Alexander Usyk he's been asked if he still thinks that Anthony Joshua has a future in the sport and he says of course he does why not what nonsense okay he has lost so what it's not lethal it's just a small respite to do some homework and Anthony Joshua here on social media saying that he needs to work harder. But I guess the question is as well with this uh, work harder sort of um, talk. I mean, who knows if he really wrote that post or had too much input. I think a lot of people are starting to think that it may not necessarily be working harder because Joshua does work hard. Maybe it's working smarter and doing things a bit differently. Robert Garcia is imploring him to come to California, have camp in his gym, have more of a sort of um, war, sort of sparring type mentality competition with other fighters, not necessarily these bespoke camps that Joshua has where there's full control and it's very sort of stage managed. So make of it what you will. But I think Joshua, he certainly still is a good heavyweight. He can be in some good fights and get some good wins and there is talk for the likes of uh, December potentially Otto Valin, Zhang Jilei and obviously Dillian White wants to be in the mix as well. 
Luis Ortiz and Andy Ruiz Jr. They've weighed in ahead of their fight, which is uh, Sunday night USA time. So only going to this is going to be out less than a day before the fight happens. So apologies if you need to skip past this. But uh, Luis Ortiz, career high, two hundred and forty-five pounds. Andy Ruiz Jr. two hundred and sixty-nine pounds. So Ruiz two sixty-nine. That's there or thereabouts where he was against Anthony Joshua the first time around. Ruiz Jr had been a bit lighter for the areola fight maybe he thought that affected his durability but um i think most people expected him maybe 260 ish somewhere there or thereabouts a little bit heavier but andy ruiz jr has fought well at this weight before uh luis ortiz meanwhile that 245 while it is a career high it's not by much generally has fought between 238 and 242 in most recent years the past half a dozen or so was 243 for the martin fight so I guess, you know, can we read in anything into that? Is this just a symptom? He's a little bit older or maybe because Andy Ruiz Jr. has um, pretty slow feet. He doesn't feel he needs to maybe move as much. Maybe he's put a bit more muscle on during this camp, going to really try to bang or t- uh, Ruiz out. Could be all manner of things. We've got some evolving beef between the two big babies. So Jarrell, a big pharmacy miller, big baby miller, as he's uh, dubbed himself in recent years. And also Jared Anderson, who calls himself, it was big baby Anderson, but now it's the real big baby. So Miller had put this post up saying, don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years, bloody, bloody, blah. And then he had a PS, which says, bite my name, bite my style, copy my shorts and my gloves, but they know blah, blah, blah. Hashtag big baby is here. And someone tagged Jared Anderson into it. And here we go. Uh, basically saying, here we go. What did he say? Shots fired Jared Anderson. Anderson came back and said, you know, they've always said if it ain't directed, it ain't respected. Big Baby Miller comes back with, please don't bite off more than you can chew. I'll address your little ass soon enough. Got bigger fresh fish to fry. And I guess by that, he means Ebenezer Tete, who is set to face in October. So that is a so-called bigger fish that will be fried. Um, That's laughable as well. But Anderson, he claps back and says, laughing my ass off, you seen me at my second fight and was none of this. I don't interest beef. See you when I do. Miller responds and big pharmacy Miller with the handshake emoji. I think a lot of people would like this fight. I kind of think it's not going to happen now. Also, Miller's a question mark with what he's doing, the comeback. Does anyone really want to take a chance on him or give him an opportunity? There has been talk he could wind up on a Daniel Dubois undercard against Lucas Brown. Uh, But the big babies um, squaring off for the right to use that nickname, I'm kind of interested, but I don't think we're going to see it for a year or two at least. Joe Kusumanu and also Joey Deveco. They are currently working with Aslan Bek Makhmadov, who is going to be fighting Carlos Takam later this month. Deveco coming off a win just a few days ago, and Kusumanu had a fight what, a week or two back. So decent sparring for Makhmadov. Obviously, he'll be looking to get some durable sparring partners like a Deveco, because obviously Carlos Takam, durable uh, on the smaller side, and also likes to, as we saw in the Joe Joyce fight, for a guy who he perceives to be slow let his hands go so i think makhmadov will be um expecting all of the same that we saw in the joyce fight uh american prospect skylar lacy has advanced to 3-0 and the fight or part of it is actually up on his instagram so you can download it and then you can turn it around because it's uh, been um, uploaded in the wrong viewing format but apart from that you can see most of the action and this one went to a decision 40 to 36 for Skyler Lacey who was a decent amateur. Uh, Adam Braidwood set to return November the 5th he will be facing Alexis Berry Air. So he is a prospect currently 7 and 6 KOs. Really haven't seen much of him so depending on the broadcasting and what's happening here looking forward to seeing this fight if I can catch it live sometimes smaller shows uh, it is a little bit harder. And Ray Mercer rounding out this uh, heavyweight news and notes mashup video some comments on Tyson Fury and also Deontay Wilder. He says I like Tyson Fury. I think he's going to whoop everybody ass and of Deontay Wilder he says he got to learn how to f- box before you come back so mercer certainly not holding back what do you make of it all drop a comment loud and often hit like hit subscribe follow me on twitter boxing underscore squared i'm out